Smashamaniacs. Gearheads. Well, welcome to Geo Gearheads. This is episode 350, and I love those round numbers, Daryl. Let me introduce Daryl. This is Daryl W4, the host of Geo Gearheads. You know, Daryl, I know you know, but I'm telling those people who don't possibly know, maybe they this is the first time they're listening to us. Geo Gearheads is a weekly show about geocaching and geolocation services, and we have a lot of fun on this show. Usually we have a lot of fun and, and we talk about a lot of stuff, uh, not necessarily all geocaching related, but uh, sometimes we did get into rat holes like just before the show, which you <laughs> didn't get to hear, but it, it was a fun rat hole. So we might have to do a whole show on that rat hole. Yeah, there you go. And how many more times do you think I can say the word rat hole? Well, I think you're going to work it in two more times into the show somehow. Probably, probably. That's, that's my climbing out of Climbing out of the rat hole is Chris of the Northwest over there. Welcome back. And who had to endure the rat hole is uh, Nicole <laughs> from GU Caching HQ. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, that, Chris, that's my two, right? I'm done? Yeah, you got my two. <laughs> you covered the spread. Las Vegas is happy. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Nicole, what do you actually do over at GU Caching HQ? I work on the volunteer support team. So my team supports the 400 plus community volunteers, and that includes reviewers, forum moderators, and translators. It's an awful lot of people. And one of the big things that you've been working on lately has been this uh, augmented reality test, which is why we have you on the show. Yes. Well, augmented reality, that phrase has been tossed around a lot and it can mean many different things but in order for our listeners to have context tonight what is augmented reality to geocaching.com so augmented reality is a technology where um, an overlay is added um, over the real world uh, image so if you look at the real world through the lens of a smartphone um, and then there's an overlay, either a video or an, an image or some kind of other information um, that is augmented reality. Nice. Now, geocaching.com, or, or headquarters as we like to refer to them as, um, has started to or has allowed the release of augmented reality geocaches. What, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so an uh, AR cache or an augmented reality cache is a mystery cache that requires the finder to download an additional third-party app that is an AR app that has AR capabilities uh, to find the uh, cache container or when at the cache container, get at the logbook uh, by using um, the AR app to play through something that the cache creator, uh, the cache owner has set up. And this is uh, just an experimental program right now. Uh, so what is the program? So under the current guidelines, uh, it is not allowed to have geocaches that require the finder to download a third-party app. But in the framework of the AR experiment, we make an exception. So uh, there's an article in the Help Center article that talks about all the details. For example, an AR cache name must start with AR underscore. This makes it easy for finders to search for AR caches. And it must be a mystery cache. And it has to have a certain text with a link to a survey on the cache page. So in the framework of this experiment, we have loosened the guidelines that allow uh, third party downloads. And originally, this was supposed to have closed just last week, uh, September 6th. That's but correct. It was during the, pro which is why we actually scheduled the show for now, because we wanted to get some uh, uh, numbers and stuff on the uh, uh, experiment. But it was extended to March 6th. So why was that extended? Yeah, so the original experiment was uh, set to only run for three months. And through the survey that is linked from every cache page, we got a lot of positive feedback that finders were liking these new types of caches or this new way of finding geocaches. And we also received a lot of feedback that the timeframe was too short. So for three months, um, 
it is difficult for a CEO to get into the technology, figure out a cache design and create a cache that they wanted. So because it was such a short time frame, we decided to extend it for another six months to give more CEOs the opportunity to make the cache yeah. they want. I'm really excited because I see the promise, but so much of what I've seen so far is really rudimentary. And I think uh, we're going to see some cooler stuff now that people have actually had the chance to get in and play with it and get a few under their belt. So that hopefully is going to bring some um, better content in the future, some better caches. And I'm not really sure, though, right now, if the AR apps are really all that stable, because I used uh, Metaverse on my iPhone 8 for both of the AR caches I tried, and it worked, but it really cranked up the usage on the phone. Uh, and it actually dimmed the screen on one of them uh, for heat issues and for the thermals. And others that I talked with simply were able, unable to use the uh, apps at all for lack of power, compatibility, um, so you know, what what are some of those apps? I already mentioned Metaverse, but what are some of those apps and how was it uh, uh, the list of approved apps developed? So currently we are allowing three apps. Uh, one is Metaverse that you already mentioned. The other one is HP Reveal. And the third one is uh, an app called Tra Tailblazer that has a heads up mode, which is the AR mode for that app. And we looked at a whole bunch of AR apps and then other apps, AR apps were brought to our attention. But we wanted to um, every app to fulfill the requirements that is that are listed in the help center so that it is free to download, that it is available for iPhone and Android, that users could supply content so that users could upload their own overlays. Um, and so this was this was really important to us so that CEOs can actually be really creative with it and that it doesn't end up costing anyone money because there are some AR apps that might be um, more stable or have different functionality, but then they have a paid plan. So those wouldn't, wouldn't work for the experiment. And so these three apps are actually the only ones that fulfill all the requirements that we are aware of. And the trial is only six more months, so the probability is something else is going to pop up isn't too good, I would imagine. Yeah, we might be surprised, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Well, and we just had uh, announcement season, and uh, new AR tools are coming out. So who knows? Yeah, it would be really cool to have um, other apps to compare to because it is like it is definitely one of the issues that has been brought up. So this in the survey that is linked from every cache page. One of the questions is, what did you not like about the, uh, your experience? And the most answered um, thing is that people are actually saying there's nothing that they didn't like about it. But then right after that uh, comes battery issues or bugs that happen in the app. So it is it is definitely a new technology that has its its kinks, but overall, the positive feedback seems to show that geocachers are figuring out, they're enjoying the experience in general. And with any luck, uh, the next six months, we'll get a lot of these bugs worked out in the actual app as well, apps, plural, and we'll have a, a better experience uh, finding and creating the caches. Yeah, a lot of COs that have kind of high rated or like high favorited AR apps, um, I've seen uh, put on the cache page. These are the known bugs that you could encounter, and here's how you can deal with it. Like, don't let your uh, your phone go into oh, what is that? That mode what where the, the, rotation, the yeah. Yeah. landscape mode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, landscape mode. Like, turn that off, and then it will work better and things like Interesting. that. Interesting. That that makes sense, though. And it, hopefully, we'll see a time when you don't have to give those kind of uh, warnings on the cache page. But it, it, it's interesting because it's the early days and we're seeing uh, those kind of uh, warnings pop up, it, kind of like we did with some of the uh, Where I Go cartridges in the early days of that. And uh, they'll eventually, hopefully, get uh, nailed down. But how many of the AR geocaches have been listed under this program so far? So there's currently 530 active uh, AR caches. And there's also a couple of events that happened where... People talked about AR or taught each other how to create an AR cache. Um, over the course of the three plus months now, 
and the average published per day uh, was 5.3 AR caches. And right now there's AR caches in 35 countries. And wow. the majority is in Europe, but there is some in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Brazil, US and Canada, and in Asia as well. So all over the world. And Interesting. So it's uh, it's more of a European thing than a US thing, I guess. Oh, there's a lot in the US. I think there's only oh, yeah. a handful of states that don't have one. <laughs> yeah, but Europe is a little bit smaller geographically than North America. So yeah, they, they if they have more, it's that much more significant. Well, I, I guess though, we probably have areas in the US and in Canada where there's less population. So we might maybe we need to skew that for population. Yeah, I haven't pulled those stats, but <laughs> that would definitely be <laughs> yeah, insightful. Too much, too much for this one. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just time to dust off the passport and start getting some uh, international AR caches. There you go. I agree with that. <laughs> now, my first uh, experience with the AR, AR caches was at Geo Woodstock 2018. 10 of the 30 lab caches there used AR. And then uh, just about that same time, uh, geocaching.com announced the AR geocache experiment was uh, going to take place. Now, I know the two were probably a coincidence, but what went into the development of the trial program and how long was it in the works before it was released? Yeah, so at the end of 2017, this is when the whole process started, we had uh, over time gotten feedback from players, from reviewers, that they would like to see a new element and AR has come up as an idea. But since it wasn't possible to allow this under the current guidelines, because there's no standard for AR, it's not like with the QR code. One second, I need to wave to get light. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Let's open the wave. <laughs> um, yeah, the like QR codes, you have multiple apps that can all open a, a QR code, but you don't have an app that can open the different AR experiences. It's always a proprietary app. So the idea was born to do an experiment to kind of see how, how it will work uh, if we allowed some of the apps to be downloaded uh, in, a, in a specific time frame. And it took a couple of months to get all the sheeps aligned or oh, whatever that <laughs> phrase oh, is. Ducks in a row? Ducks in a row, thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, in June 2018, we were ready to, to go ahead with it. Nice. Now, what are some of the responses, some of the things you're hoping to get, to get out of this, learn from this kind of a test? So we wanted to see what cash owners would do with a new tool. Uh, how that would impact the creativity of caches, how that would impact the enjoyment of cache finders. Would uh, AR caches get more favorite points or have like longer logs and more pictures attached to the logs? Like how will the community react to uh, this new element? Yeah. Okay. Now I know it's still early, but can you talk about some of the feedback you've received? And did you get as much as you hoped for? Yeah, I can talk a bit ab uh, about it a little bit. Uh, we have, for the survey that is linked to from every cache page, we got uh, around 1,500 replies. And there are some uh, quantitative and some qualitative questions in there. And one of the questions that is on a scale of one to five uh, asks, how likely or like how interested are you in getting in finding another AR cache? And over 70% of people who replied uh, voted four or five, which is a pretty compelling number, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the feedback was over, overwhelmingly positive despite the kinks with the technology. And yeah, it definitely seems like uh, geocaches are interested in finding AR experiences, uh, AR caches. And uh, we actually added a new question for the extension of the experiment and the new question is whether or not the cache is location based or not so can you open the the ar experience just anywhere and play through it or do you have to be at the location to do it because we get some feedback that people liked location-based experiences more mm -hmm. than non-location-based experiences and 
so far, uh, I think it's about 50, 60 people who have replied to the survey with a new question. And I was surprised to see that about 80% uh, were saying that it was a location-based AR cache. So that might mean that it's if you found a location-based cache, uh, AR cache, you're more likely to fill out the survey. <laughs> I haven't dug into the into the details of the of sure. the results yet, but it is definitely super fascinating to see all the answers come in and see how the survey develops and the stats exactly. change over time. Yeah, it's interesting to see who responds and how they respond. But it does not surprise me that uh, geocachers want a location-based experience since really that is the heart of geocaching, to go somewhere and find something. So, Yes, absolutely. Well, even it for those there. not location-based experiences, the mm -hmm. there has to be some GPS usage. So mm -hmm. even if you can play it at home, you'll get coordinates to then navigate to to get to the final but yeah, yeah, in the, the field of doing that yeah. right now is that if you have issues with the play anywhere, you can do it like at home, not always, but you can usually do it like at home where it's a uh, controlled environment and you're not as likely to uh, freak out the phone as much. So there, yeah. there are some advantages, but it's that I think the first one I found was actually a play anywhere that we ended up having to play in the parking lot. And it's uh, kind of disappointing well, i think a lot of ceos uh, kind of tried out the new technology like how would it work like kind of proof of concept so hopefully in the in the extension they can go and create what they what they dream of like the yeah. like let the creativity flow instead of just proving that it works yeah and you have to do a bunch of uh, probably junk uh, cartridges, I'll call them, you know, these experiences uh, that you probably throw away and start over before you'll really start getting something that's good as the author. But you kind of mentioned earlier that you were looking at the author side of this as well. Are you actually digging in at HQ to see how some of these were uh, developed and what they're doing? Or are you just like going out in the field and trying some? There's not much we can try around here, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but the some of the CEOs have filled out the survey, so it is interesting to get their perspective as well. We don't have a specific survey just for CEOs, but um, yeah. All right. <laughs> do you have? Uh, do you know of any uh, really cool uses, notable uses of the AR tech that's uh, caught the eye of anyone at HQ? There's a couple of cool ones out there that. Um, that we've seen one that was published pretty early on is in Australia, where you have to walk around the zoo, like outside of the parameters of the zoo, and you see animals in the AR, like as AR overlays that you then interact with and have conversations. And then I, it is location-based, so I haven't actually played it. I just read logs and the cache page, but it's something like, you know, the, the rabbit will give you the banana and you have to go to the monkey to, to give them the banana. And, that was that's kind of uh, seems to be a, a really fun one. There's also AR cache an AR cache where at one point you get a 360 view of the ocean floor and have to find the coordinates kind of hidden in the uh, among the uh, the plants on the ocean floor. Wow! And yeah, other caches you have to find a an, a sign or some object in the field and then uh, scan it with the app to, and then a video starts playing that gives you the next hints. So there's been, there's, there's a lot of pretty cre creative, um, creative caches out there. Someone, uh, one of the meet and greets was talking about uh, an AR experience. I think that they were doing outside of the uh, geocaching experiment, but it was a uh, um, moon or no, it was Mars. It was uh, taking the, images from the Mars rover and putting it into 3D and you could then walk around in it. And they were talking about doing that with uh, um, you know, one of the AR caches, making something like that. Uh, where you're caching on the moon or caching on Mars or uh, one of those kind of things. But I was cool. thinking, yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I was thinking, how cool would it be if you had some like old 360 footage of something like... Uh, uh, the uh, World's Fair, and you put a cache out there in Flushing Meadows, 
you know, where you're walking around the world's fair, trying to find, you know, whatever exhibit was there and do you know, something that immersive. But mm -hmm. what I understand it's going to be hard to find the 360 images like that, of course, yeah. but also it's going to take a lot more programming to make that work well than most of us geocachers would be able to do in just the three month trial. So hopefully, there's some pretty techy geocachers out there. So if there you're are. listening, do it. There are. <laughs> and hopefully this uh, six month extension is going to you know, give yes. the people who can do it the time to get those out. Cause I'm really excited and anxious to see something like that happen. There is something, I don't know how immersive it is, uh, compared to what you're talking about, but there is an AR cache in Switzerland that takes you along an old uh, Formula One racing course and like has the different Very stations cool. where where you learn I don't know the history or what from the from the course. Well, you know, a lot of uh, listeners probably already know that one of the reasons I got into geocaching is I was looking for a way to do like a historic. Uh, walk and mark the locations and have like photos or whatever pop up and that kind of stuff you should be able to do that just even fly the photos in at the location of where mm -hmm. this building used to be so you could do the little history walk with like a letterbox style adventure even mm -hmm. yeah a couple of people in the chat room have been talking about caches that they want to make and they're talking about uh, where I go uh, style caches. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. Maybe they can tell us a little bit more, but I'm thinking that uh, question and answer, uh, you know, get an object, deal with the inventory, mm -hmm. which again gets into a lot more uh, work authoring it, but makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. I've done a couple of where I goes like that. And, uh, you know, it's very engaging. So. You know, you've yeah. got to walk to the locations. Now, Nicole, uh, when lab cash when lab caches were announced several years ago, it was, you know, kind of touted as the way to test various ideas that uh, geocaching HQ wanted to try. But this isn't anything quite like a lab cache, um, and and wasn't brought out under that umbrella. But um, why was it brought out as a mystery cache rather than a lab cache? So lab caches, are the, as they are set up today, are more geared towards mega events. And so they're not as accessible to everyone to play or create. And so we really wanted to have this be open for everyone uh, or anyone who is interested to try. And then, of course, a physical cache in the end uh, gives it a little different, uh, puts it in a different category than lab caches. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. Um, now in the uh, chat, they're saying that the where I go experience that they're talking about is a story type, uh, multi waypoint interactive style of experience. So kind of where we're uh, uh, going with a lot of what we're talking about, right? That we hope and, to see uh, in the future ones, right? And chasing the Iron Man says that's Metaverse's specialty. HP reveal is the image recognition 3D overlay specialty. So. I yeah. I know several people who use these uh, AR either Metaverse or uh, uh, HP Reveal in their work environment for training and such, and so you know it's it's very stable. It's you know been around for quite some time, but uh, being able to use it in a game is still I think relatively new. Yeah, I think some people have been playing with some of that because I've heard of uh, some. Um scavenger hunts done like that with uh, metaverse again i've never tried it this is the first time i've used it and the first time i've actually heard of metaverse was from this uh, trial but i'm anxious to see where people uh, take this and it seems in the chat that our general consent or general uh feeling has been a lot of people who have not yet been able to do an ar cache and a lot of people who are very interested in actually producing one themselves who have not yet done so I'm very excited for uh, all the caches that are still to come. It is It has been really exciting to just see how many have been submitted and published and all the ideas that are out there. And also like everything that CEOs uh, kind of come up with doing with these apps. Um, the, the interactive part of augmented reality is definitely something that uh, seems to be liked by the community that came up in the survey as one of the positive things. 
And yeah, Metaverse has this option of uh, kind of grouping different waypoints, so to say, to, to make a multi-stage kind of AR experience. But I've also seen multi-stage AR caches with HP Reveal, where you have to go to this waypoint first, scan that uh, to get something from the from the AR, and then go to the next one and scan another uh, sign or another object in the field. So it's it's really cool to just see all the possibilities that caches come up with. So I like this idea of actually interacting with physical objects in the real world. This that could be a lot more fun too if you have to actually go to a, a sign or something and scan the photo of the house to actually open the door or something. I don't know. I, I can see all kinds of cool stuff happening with that. And I wish I had the time to delve into the development of these because it just would be so much fun to do. Daryl, you have plenty of time. Not only has Geocaching HQ given you another six months, but who needs sleep? You've got six <laughs> months of eight-hour shifts there that you could be working on this. Oh, if only I actually got eight hours of sleep. Okay. <laughs> I just learned that the Guinness World Record for not sleeping is 11 days and 25 minutes, and there were no health concerns afterwards. So Really? Really? <laughs> well, now, now we have a new target. It's just <laughs> your mental <laughs> health because you start to hallucinate. and Yeah. If you've yeah, got people well, to help you, it's okay. <laughs> when I was younger, I could do that. Not so much anymore. 11 days, Daryl? Like, uh, it, uh, well, it was a high school I kid. would do, well, no, no, the, the, just out of uh, college, basically, I was doing uh, multimedia projects. So we'd have those days of uh, you know, rushing to get a project out the door, and it would be like two weeks. You got like maybe, you know, 30-minute cat naps here and there while you were waiting for the computer mm -hmm. to do something, and lots and lots of coffee. Coffee to the point where coffee doesn't or didn't have the effect on me anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, I also like the idea that they're uh, coming up with in the uh, chat. I think this is chasing Iron Man again. Uh, Chris, you were talking with him about doing the uh, maze. Mm -hmm. you know, there were so many of those where I goes that uh, were the maze in the middle of the field that were just interesting to watch people yeah. wandering around seemingly, you know, endlessly in the uh, uh, middle yeah. of this field. Here is an even better way to do that now. Yeah. Limax said he he thought a maze would be cool and chasing the Iron Man, who's made a an AR cache uh, that works with both HP Reveal and Metaverse. So there you go. That's something. Yay. Oh, oh, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I forgot the timing there. Woo! <laughs> See, this is one of the best parts of uh, GCHQ podcast. Is, mm -hmm. is they always have to do something like a dance or whatever during the show. To Turn the lights on. <laughs> um, but yeah, being able to do a maze out in a field, uh, I think would be spectacular. Absolutely. Uh, but it also comes to mind that this is still not going to allow for something uh, like an indoor experiment, so uh, an indoor cache, so you can't do something like in the mall. I was going to say, why not use a mall? No, you probably could, but I thought it, that... Uh, it depends on your location accuracy in the building. Yeah, exactly. So that, and the waypoints the of the IR experience, if it's location-based, have to be outside. Uh, uh, okay, there we go. So you can go around the outside of the mall. You've got that huge parking lot. As long as you don't do it at Christmas, <laughs> nobody else is there. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, no, but I, I like the idea of uh, doing something like that in the mall for those rainy day caching uh, outings or, you know, blizzard caching. But yeah, that, it just doesn't work so well. It would be. Daryl, do you remember when we did the day of all virtuals? and absolutely caches and there was one virtual that uh we had to drive multiple points to we could set that up with ar you drive to the multiple you could do that on a rainy day you know stay in the car and and hit a sign until you actually have to sure. find the final yeah this is to do like an ar driving cache but i worry yeah. that the driver is going to be the one doing that well if, i agree but if you make them stop at a certain point and scan a sign then you know, in a parking lot, in a pull-off, something like that. Yeah. 
don't no, you're not going to yeah. be scanning at 55 miles an hour and hope <laughs> you get what you need. <laughs> do, maybe do the logo or something on the side of a building. There you go. So it's big enough you don't have to get out of the car. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Or that you just put really the cool. waypoints far enough away so that one weather um, zone doesn't hmm. extend to it so you can escape the rain. <laughs> <laughs> A cross-country <laughs> AR cache. See, and I thought we still had to have the waypoints within two miles. Um, the final has to be within two miles of the posted coordinates, yes. But the waypoint oh. can be farther away? Oh, no. Oh, no. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> huh, okay. Well, I, I see some uh, really extended drive caches coming. We, we have a uh, really nice five-mile drive through our uh, large park here. Yeah, and, no, I, and you I'm, start and end at the same spot, but you could do the whole five mile drive. I'm envisioning though some of the uh, art walks being converted into AR caches, though. Mm. ART walks. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> nice, <that>. nice. <laughs> you know that's going to be the name of the cache. <laughs> Just someone has to do it now. But yeah, you could do the history walks like that. The art walks would be great because a lot of that stuff you wouldn't necessarily need to get out of the car if it's a rainy day. Right. Or if it's a hot day here. And, the, you know, uh, in Washington car. State, we've got a good three months of rain coming up. So having something like that would be interesting. Although you might not be able to scan the uh, artwork through the rain. Right. That's true. That's true. What about murals or graffiti? Graffiti may exactly. change. But mur well, murals yeah, I on was the wall. Say, the graffiti would be a problem, but some of the uh, uh, graffiti is actually like uh, community permanent sanctioned artwork. now, yeah. and it's permanent artwork, so that kind of stuff would certainly work. Right. Yeah, you know, really I still consider that, that a mural at that point. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a mural in the style of graffiti, right? And some of that stuff is just amazing. There's a uh, uh, Dequinder Cut Park out here that I might have to go explore to again. Dequinder Cut. <laughs> Um, Limax says there's there's an AR cache within 250 miles of him called AR E we in the zoo. So <laughs> are we in the zoo? Nice. But yeah, the Dequinder cut has the uh, uh, graffiti like that. I think it changes, but I'll have to uh, look into that. But that would be a good one to do because it's this really cool old uh, rail trail kind of thing. But it used to be a uh, railroad. Uh, yard essentially as well as the access from the Detroit River back to the uh, main yeah. national network well in the chat uh, chasing the Ironman comes up with a very good point he says you know it, it, you got to pick something that's going to work day or night so if it's not well lit you can't do it at night right he well, says, would you I, necessarily have to do it at night my AR works day or night though it's lit at night yeah Depends but there, you design the tracking image and there's parks that aren't necessarily going to be open after uh, sundown right. either. So at that point, it probably doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, day or night. But that's a good thing that people probably need to take into consideration when designing these caches is if it's going to be a cache that's accessible beyond sundown or be before sunrise, make sure that it's going to be something that works in the uh, uh, dark. That's right. Sundown, you better beware. <laughs> But that yeah, might make it easier. Uh, it can definitely be finicky when you have to scan an image to get uh, an AR overlay. If the lighting condition changes, or if you if you do a sign and you you zoom to, like do you take the photo too far out and it takes something in the background to account and that disappears later, then it can't recognize that image anymore. Or changes oh, yeah. like foliage and the you know yeah right yeah. Off the tree and then yeah. Right, but if you're having problems seeing the uh, overlays, it might be a good idea to try it after dark and uh, do the uh, cache at that point, the AR uh, at that point, because you might have an easier time reading that too. Right. Well, as long as you don't have to uh, scan something. Nicole, we have a question in the chat from Chasing the Iron Man. He says, can you actually say that an AR cache has to be done during daylight hours? Is there a guideline or a rule that it must be doable 24-7? There's no guideline that a cache has to be 24/7. It ha it should be available for the majority of time, and I think I think it's fair to say um, you can only do it during daylight hours. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's in a park, 
that yeah. you know has limited yeah. access well that yeah. that makes sense but okay. right well and there's the uh um attribute that you can select that says not available uh 24 7 and people yeah. read the attributes that's funny yeah, i know <laughs> well but that's that's a good hint that it doesn't have to be available 24 exactly. 7. exactly well the good thing about ar caches being mystery caches is that people tend to read mystery cache pages a little more closely yeah, you're exactly yeah, right true. you're right i hadn't considered that oh so i'm really excited i don't know about you chris but i might have to actually go uh, uh check into the development of metaverse caches but i yes, don't know when i have the time i'm right there with you you know i had to look up again to see if there was another uh ar cache near me and there's one just outside of seattle um ar signals treasure hunt and then we've got one in the tri-cities which is you know uh four or five hour drive and then other side of the state two hours to portland so not you know the one in seattle i've got to go do it's uh i believe it's a little hike if i remember properly uh, yeah i don't have one it's quite so accessible anymore it's going to take a drive but I'll, I'll have to do that uh sometime during the next uh four months when we have to get those uh, uh points for the souvenirs yeah mm-hmm have you already earned your junkie geocaching junkie souvenir? I, I'm seven away, seven points away. Nice. My wife has already hit it because she hit caches that I've already done, so I can't log ah. them again. Well, and I guess that, you're not a geocaching junkie yet, then. <laughs> ooh, someone uh, asked if anyone has developed a, a tail blazer cache, because all, which is an interesting point. All of the discussion I've heard has been over the uh, HP reveal and the metaverse. I've yet to hear anyone talk about that third app, the uh, Tailblazer. I know there's some in California, but the majority of the ones that are out there are definitely using either Metaverse or HP Reveal. Interesting. I I don't know anything about the uh, Tailblazer. I might have to look into that because it's it, by the name, you'd think it was more of a story-based one. So that might be uh, more interesting for people wanting to develop the as they call it in the chat the where i go style uh ar experiences right uh chasing the iron man thank you so much you you are incredibly helpful this evening so he says right tail tail blazer that's a tough one for me to say i i you just want to say trail. own a vehicle called a trailblazer but a tail blazer is another where i go style waypoint experience so yeah, th this is why I love the chat room and our uh, uh, research department that lives in there. Thank you so <laughs> much for everyone who's in there and helping us out. Yes. Um, Limax asked if I had gotten the Tri-Cities uh, AR cache when I was there. And I looked and I go, no, it was just posted in the last two weeks. So that's a shame because I was there, what, two months ago? This, I yeah, but say, you didn't have your time machine with you? No. No, I, I tend not to travel with it. It's big and bulky. <laughs> really cuts down on the gas mileage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, you know, like the hotel. Is that going to be there, you know, 80,000 years in the past? I don't know. But my it's house, true. I know it'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and how much plutonium do you want to carry with you? And, you know, is that going to set off the uh, alarms at the uh, stations and everything, the way stations? No. Nobody worries about plutonium anymore. <laughs> you guys are doing it all wrong. I just went to the future where I had a small time machine developed and brought that back. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah, you're right. Well, the steampunk not... time machine I got. Should... <laughs> I, I'm doing it completely wrong. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Nicole, for joining us and giving us uh, some insight into the AR experiment. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, now, we are going to do a patron hangout. That's this Tuesday, September 18th at 9 p.m. Pacific. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So patrons, come on. We want to meet with you. It's just a chance to sit down, talk. Um, we're not going to play board games, but we should. You no, know, I don't think the board games would work too well on a hangout, but it's always a lot of fun and I have the feeling we're going to be talking a little bit about the AR caches 
and probably a little bit about the phones, which, you know, the new iPhones are very disappointing to me. <laughs> we had this discussion <laughs> earlier. Poor so you, we'll probably Darryl. vent about that. You know, you could buy a, an iPhone or, you know, like a 13.9 inch uh, iPad. They're about the same price. <laughs> yeah, they are actually the same price now. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the 13 inch iPad is actually smaller than the cheaper new iPhone 10. That thing is just yeah. a beast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is one topic we may talk about next week, September 20th, when we do a randomized show. And I don't know how to pronounce this one. There's L I X X or L X X I I I. It sounds like a sailor. And, uh, <laughs> I, I try to pronounce the Roman numerals. I know you're not supposed to, but I do it anyway. September 27th, we're talking power trails. And oddly enough, this is the first time we've done it. October 24th, we're talking trackable partnerships, number two. And then we're going to do another randomized show, October 11th. They're my favorite. I like to stick them in there if I get the chance. Check the Cashamaniacs website at cashamaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gearheads, including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cashamaniac shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on the website to support the Cashamaniac shows. Geo Gearheads is produced by Chris Sauvener and Daryl Wanberg. This show is copyright 2018 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. 